Well, blacksmithing is all about working iron. Most, well, I shouldn't say all about, but mostly about working iron. Uh, iron's considered the black metal, and that's kind of why it's blacksmithing. Uh, you know, obviously, goldsmiths work with gold, and silversmiths work with silver. So, when you hear blacksmith, that's working black metal or, or iron, and it's primarily a hot work process. It's manipulative. Machining is you start with a big piece and you remove everything you don't want. Blacksmithing reshapes a given lump of iron. It can make it longer, it can make it shorter, it can change shape in one direction or another. And so it's a, a whole different thing than machining or welding. Blacksmithing. It is an ancient art that has spearheaded humanity's history through the ages, lasting even to the common eras of today. The art of smithing is a form of creation known as forging, where a smith places a piece of metal in a hot fire, then using tools, they shape and change the metal to their specific purpose. But what are these tools exactly? Well, the most basic tools are a forge, uh, then that's a fire, and there's different versions of that, and a hammer and an anvil. And those are the three non-dispensable tools. You can make make a lot of other tools. You know, the, the blacksmiths need a, a lot of other things, but you have to have the forge, the hammer, and the anvil to start with. A forge can vary on the type of metal the smith is working with. Different metals require certain amounts of heat to forge. An anvil is a hard, solid block that acts as a surface for a smith to bend and shape the heated metal. There are different types of anvils that each do a specific job. This one is used by general smiths. This one is an armorer's anvil, and this is a cutler's anvil. Most anvils are made of wrought iron and faced with steel. This way, the anvil does not deform and warp from the impact. But with a job like this, with hot fire and molten metal, one might wonder what some of the dangers are for someone in this line of work. Probably anything that involves machinery, um, rotating machinery in, in particular, grinders, buffers, wire brushes, things that are common in, in lots of other industries, but they can grab pieces and throw them. Um, it's, Easy to get burned working at the forge, but it's also fairly easy to avoid, and usually the burns aren't really all that bad. Um, but the more serious injuries you hear about in blacksmithing almost always go back to a piece of machinery that somebody didn't give proper respect to. But you can't just walk into a smithy and expect to know what to do by instinct. You must learn. But what might be the best way to start learning? In this country, it, most people are more or less self-taught or they learn from small weekend workshops and week-long classes. You know, we don't have an apprenticeship process in the United States. Some other countries still use an older apprenticeship process where you go to work for a, a master and you learn what they want to teach you and then you go on the journeyman's program and work with other shops. But in the U.S. it's mostly self-taught books. The internet is huge resource now with both good information and bad. There's a lot of really awful advice on the internet. <laughs> but the, the best that way to learn is to get involved with other blacksmiths. And by learning from these experts, what might be the most important thing to take away from it? Uh, being able to take a, a good heat and uh, knowing what that, that means. You know, that's different for every everything. There are some things you, you do cold and you don't need to get it hot, but working things that are need to be hot at too low of a temperature is not only frustrating, but it is just counterproductive. <laughs> and now, I hope you have all earned a better understanding of the oldest art, blacksmithing.